welcome to the Cinnabar. Now if you watch this channel much you know that I thoroughly enjoy shooting these old firearms. And one of the great things about doing what I do is getting the opportunity to shoot a lot of these firearms that go through the shop here. Now today in honor of our part-time IT guy, Bubba, <laughs> getting a, a big share of our rifle inventory finally onto our, our website, we're going to just come back here to the rack and pick out some, some great rifles, uh, take them up on the hill and, and do a little shooting. Gives us an opportunity to test them out, make sure they're in, in good shape and functioning properly before they go out to the customer. <laughs> and I have to admit a, a bigger motivation might be that I want to make sure that I get an opportunity to shoot them before they go away. So let's have a look here real quick. We'll pick out a few. Um, one I've been dying to shoot here is just a beautiful high condition 76 set trigger gun. Um, just a, a dandy 4560. And I actually have a, a little bit of black powder ammo, so we're actually going to shoot the holy black through that one. Let's see, there's a 73 here that I really like. This is a, this is a cool old, eight, it's a 3840, a 26-inch barrel set trigger. I did, I did uh, repair that set trigger in that set trigger episode here a, a while back, but this is a, a great old rifle. It's not a super high condition, but a real honest old rifle that's that's put some meat on the table I'm sure. Let's see, next in line we've got a beautiful high condition Colt Burgess. If you watch the channel much you, you know that I, I kind of have an affinity for these Colt Burgess. You don't see them much on YouTube but uh, I did shoot this one in one of the episodes but I just put a couple rounds through it and I've been dying to go out there and, and put a few more through it so we'll take that one out. Um, let's see, here's a dandy. This one's on consignment, I've been uh, liquidating a, a, a collection for a fella and, and then in the process of liquidating a, a lot of his kind of odds and ends in his collection now he's he's gotten a kind of a new fever and he, he's starting to add some guns back to his collection but this one is a beauty. This is a Remington Hepburn 4570 high high condition gun and uh, he's He's kind of encouraged me to, to take a lot of these guns out that, that uh, we've been liquidating out of his collection and, and shoot them. So we've already done se several of his in, in previous ec episodes, test fired them. I've been looking forward to that one for a while. Let's see, here's one that's out of my personal collection that I've put on the shelf. This one, if you, if you watch Butch, you know that I, I shoot a lot of 95s. This one's a really high condition and a really early flat side. In fact, this one's just a two-digit serial number, so i um, been itching to shoot that one. I've had it for a while, and I figured it was time just to kind of roll a few things over out of the collection, and that was one. And then, let's see, I got this come out of a, an estate just recently. I, I picked up a few guns down here on the end, um, so something completely different here. There's an, a 1907 351 caliber semi-auto, and... and Keep watching if you're into these semi-autos because I've got an episode coming up real quick where we're going to go through the, all the different models of the, the early semi-auto Winchesters. So we've got a pretty good cross-section here of some, some dandy rifles. Let's uh, gather up some ammunition and head on up the hill. Now I have to admit, on days like today, it's good to be me. With a lineup of wonderful old rifles like this, a beautiful early spring day and I don't be fooled into thinking that uh, the sun always shines and it's always bright and beautiful out here on the ranch because we just picked those days to come out here and, and do some shooting. Um, we got about two weeks of snow in the forecast coming up so we're going to take advantage we're going to make some hay when the sun shines. Let's take a little closer look at these rifles and then we'll see how they shoot. All right so here's this lineup of dandy old rifles. First up is that 73, 38, 40. 26 inch barrel and set trigger. Just a great, honest, original old rifle. Then we've got this dandy Colt Burgess. One of the nicer Colt Burgess I, I've ever seen. And uh, based on the couple of shots I took with it in our, our one of our previous episodes, I'd say it's going to be a dandy shooter too. And then of course this really high condition 76, 4560 set trigger. Just a dandy. Cleaning rods are still in the butt of this thing, believe it or not. Then we're up to this early, early flat side 1895. And when I say early, I'm not overstating it. See, this one's serial number 12. It is the 
earliest known ser serial number that's come to light so far. There's only a few two-digit serial number 95s out there. No single digits have showed up. Now we're into this Remington Hepburn. What a dandy. 4570, half octagon barrel. Just fantastic condition. Uh, lots of case colors left on the receiver. And then this this gun, that's, this rifle that's way ahead of its time, the 1907 Winchester, semi-automatic, detachable magazine. These are great, great little rifles and a, a lot of fun to shoot. So let's get to it. Let's see how they shoot. All right, now we've loaded up each of these with five rounds, of course, except for the Remington Hepburn, which is single shot. And we're just going to see where they shoot, how they feed, just overall how they function and of course have a blast while we're at it. So first up this 3840 um, 1873 extra length barrel. The four of these rifles are black powder air rifles so we're going to be shooting black powder including this 3840 today. Uh, we've got a couple of smokeless air, powder era rifles and we'll be shooting smokeless through them. All right here we go. I'm going to put it on steel first just to see where it is. That front sight's pretty low, so I'm thinking it's probably going to shoot kind of high. Wow, real high. Okay, clear over the top. Let's shoot even a little lower. There we go. So it's shooting. Well, that hit right in the middle of the target, so that's just about right holding under. Let's shoot one of those jugs that's up close. We'll shoot underneath it. And we poked a hole right through it. Okay, so let's see. We got a couple more here. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're still shooting high. We've got to aim even a little lower. Let's just get back on steel on that other target. Okay, that's a great old rifle. We're going to have to find a little taller front sight for that one, though, obviously. All right, let's try this Colt Burgess. What a dandy. 4440. Of course, all Colt Burgess were 4440. Oh, it's got a, a sweet feel to it. Just fantastic. Oh, there we go. This is a good shooter, too. Oh, didn't want to eject quite right there. Okay, let's try one of them jugs up front. Oh, oh, she's just not ejecting. I shot it a couple times in a video recently, and it ejected just fine. So we have to cycle a little harder, I think. There we go. That was just me. That wasn't the gun. Oh, there we go. Well, yeah, we got one more. Let's get one of them jugs up on top. Oh, that died good. <laughs> what a great rifle. Just got to cycle them a little faster. Now, I am excited about this one. This is a beautiful, beautiful high condition 1876 set trigger rifle. Hey, it feeds good. Let's see, we'll, we'll set the trigger and see what we can do with the steel right up front. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> okay, let's hit a jug. Oh, I missed it, I think. Yep, okay, we're going to try that one again. It's a sneaky one. Oh, didn't miss it that time. Let's get back on steel. Okay, my glasses, the recoil's taking my glasses off. Okay, we're gonna hit, uh, I'm gonna try that one way out there. There's one out there, over 100 yards out there. Hey, got it, first shot. <laughs> what a great, great old rifle. I love it. I love it. Okay, let's see, get my glasses back on. These collapsible glasses, the recoil was collapsing them on me. Okay, now here we are. Serial number 12. Earliest known, lowest serial number. 1895 known. Let's see what it does on steel first. Uh-oh. It wasn't on steel. Don't know where it hit. Let's try it again. We'll shoot low. There we go. So it's shooting a little bit high. All right, we'll try one of them jugs out there. Oh, now we got it figured out. I'm going to shoot that jug up front that didn't get really killed all the way. Oh, got another hole in it now. 
We got, yeah, we got one more in there. Let's get back on steel. <laughs> what a great shooting rifle. Now, this one is one we are shooting smokeless powder in. Now, you might think serial number 12, geez, that was made in 1895. But the 95s were the first model that, spring, that uh, Winchester made for smokeless powder. So even on this one, early, early, made August of 1895, and there's only 57 of them made the first year. Here we have nickel steel barrel, especially for smokeless powder. Okay, so obviously it held up just fine. Those were factory 3040 Craig loads. Just dandies. Okay, here we go, this Remington Hepburn. What a fabulous, fabulous old rifle. Now these are kind of interesting. There's no half cock on them, like, a, like with a Sharps falling block, where you put it half cock and, and uh, drop the block. The uh, hammer rides back where, where it doesn't ride onto the, uh, the firing pin, so you don't have to worry about that. So we, we load one and then we can, we can cock the action. Doesn't, it doesn't cock the thing when you, when you uh, work the action. Okay, so we'll get back on to, to some uh, steel first. Oh, there we go. Good shooting old girl. I kind of figured I would be using this one to shoot that jug way out there. We might have to put another jug out there. Let's, uh, let's see if we can't hit another one of these jugs up close here first. Oh, what a great, great shooting old rifle. Okay, let's do one more just for the heck of it. Put it on steel. Okay. <laughs> what a dandy. Okay, so now, one of my favorite Winchesters, and this one's a little bit out of what we normally shoot around here, but these, these early, early, and this one's a first year production, one of the first ones made, uh, 1907. We charge it this way, and we're ready to go. Semi-automatic, let's, uh, Let's hit the steel first. Now what I didn't notice is that this one doesn't have the leaf in the rear sight, so it's probably shooting really, really high. Or really, really low. Let's try that. There we go. Gonna be hard to get on one of them jugs with it. Oh, we'll try it again. There we go. Okay. Those are fun. These one of the nice things about these they're really heavy and a heavy reciprocating mass. So the the recoil isn't there at all. I mean these things just don't hit you at, at all. Wow. What a great lineup of gun. Great, great fun shooting these old girls. I'm going to have to put another jug out there and and see if we can't uh, hit something a little further out again. Now, we put another jug out there on that 100 yard stump and we picked up the one that was out there and I gotta tell you, I was just thrilled to hit that with a, the one shot with that 1876 that I hadn't shot before. Um, and when I picked up the jug, it is dead center in the middle. You couldn't have dead centered it any better. So, man, what a great shooting rifle. <laughs> Not sure I wanna sell it now. That's one of the problems with collecting what you sell. Uh, you, you never wanna let them go. Um, but anyway, we're gonna we're gonna try out that that Hepburn. See if we can't hit with it. Now I I know it was shooting a little bit high, so we'll see if we can't put one on target out there as well as we did with that 76 one shot. Here we go. We're gonna shoot right at the base of it. And see if we can't can't get it killed. Oh, didn't hit it that time. Problem is of soil moisture, we can't see, it doesn't kick up any dust out there to see where they hit. Okay, let's give it another try. Well, heck. All right, let's, 
I've been shooting under it. Let's just aim right on. There we go. <laughs> I was out guessing myself trying to shoot under it. That just nailed her. All right, another great shooting rifle if I just trusted the sights instead of trying to to have some Kentucky windage there. Now this this old Hepburn, as I, I mentioned, this one's part of a uh, a collection that we've been been uh, selling for a fella, and you know we're getting more and more into that. We're we're doing a lot more work in in uh, um, selling collections, uh, estates, those kind of things, liquidating for people, um, out looking for for guns for people, specific guns and that kind of thing. We're doing less and less outside gunsmithing. In fact, right now I'm just not taking on any new projects. I've got so many irons in the fire and I'm behind far enough I really kind of owe it to the people that that have guns in the shop now and if I'm ever going to get to any of my projects or my wife's projects I'm, I'm going to have to uh, concentrate more on getting caught up and getting some of those projects guns done. So we're, we're going to stay doing some video, some filming, but we're just not taking on any more outside gunsmith, at least if, for the time being. And if that changes, of course, we'll we'll let you know right away. I appreciate all the support that everybody's given. It's just been kind of overwhelming for my little one-man operation. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. This was really fun for me. Um, maybe learned a little something about some of these old guns and, and you know if they're in good shape it doesn't matter if they're they're old old rifles uh, they they're made to be shot let's take them out and shoot them until next time happy trails from the Cinnabar. bar